Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 8, Episode 16. Holy schnitzel! The ladies are in Berlin and today they have split into two groups. Lisa Vanderpump, Dorit, and Erica have gone shopping and they have Axel, their personal shopper for the day. And Lisa Rinna, Kyle, and Teddy have gone out to breakfast. We are cutting back and forth between these two scenes, basically just to show us that these ladies are high maintenance. This poor waiter, they keep trying to order like soy milk or a latte or this or that. Kyle didn't like how her eggs were cooked. She had to send those back. And then for the shopping, like I told you, the personal shopper's name was Axel. You just keep hearing from the dressing rooms Dorit and Vanderpump. Axel? 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 Axel, I need you. Axel, where are you? Oh my God. Okay, then it's time for the horseback riding. And you know, Teddy could not wait for this because this is where Teddy shines. She doesn't like shopping like the rest of the ladies, so she couldn't wait for this. And oh, it did not go so well. Oh my gosh, the ladies are picking out what horses they want. And the woman at the stable said, okay, who's the most experienced rider? And they all said, Teddy. And she goes, okay, this will be your horse. And then the others got to, I guess, sort of pick what horses they wanted. And Kyle's like, oh, I want that one because Kyle's short. And this was a short horse, but <laughs> oh my God, when you saw the scene of them all together on the horses, <laughs> Kyle looked like she Kyle looked like she was on a pony ride. It was, she was so much shorter than everybody else. The comparison was hilarious. So anyway, off they go. And Kyle does mention that she has an allergy to horses, but she thought she could just kind of power through like the itchy, watery eyes. Mm, no, she was wrong. First of all, Lisa Rinna's horse was getting away from her and she kept saying, ho, ho. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I guess it was like, whoa, you know, but they, I don't know if she was taught to say ho and go down with the reins or something, but all you could hear is Rena going, ho, ho. So Teddy looked concerned and she sprung into action. She's like, okay, put your legs forward, lean your body back, pull the reins down, be firm. Anyway, she got the whole situation under control. She got that horse stopped. She saved the day. Then Kyle like has an asthma attack. She's got to get off the horse. She's like, I, I, my chest is tight. I need to get back to the stable. So that was pretty much where the horseback riding ended. It was very short. I hope it went on a little bit longer than they showed us, but it looked like they almost just got out into the open field and then they had to come back. <laughs> but Kyle's, the doctor there then gave Kyle something for the asthma. And then she was having like a panic attack, which she said comes on when she's feeling a lot of stress. So it was not her best day. I will say this, that when they got back into the van, Erica was giving Teddy all kinds of props for getting things under control. So I don't know. She still seems to be making up to Teddy. I mean, listen, she, the girl's got a lot to make up for, but I mean, I'm, I'm happy. Let's just put it that way. Next is the dinner in Erica's room that she had planned the night before. And she talked about how, oh, she went over the menu with everybody and um, the staff just took care of everything and how great it was. So she's greeting everybody at the door. Everyone's all fancy pants. Erica's got on this lovely outfit with a pillbox hat and like netting over half of her face. Gorgeous red lip. Perfect, typical Erica look, you know? And everybody else is fancy and nice. The first course is veal tartare. All right, let me just say this. I'm not eating anything tartare, but I'm certainly not eating veal tartare. And I'm not alone because most 
all of the women other than Erica and I think Kyle, the rest of them wouldn't even touch it. So I felt a little bad for Erica and I was wondering if she was gonna like have a fit, but she didn't. And then the discussion got to like asking Kyle how old she was when she first had a panic attack and she said 12 which was like you know way too young and I don't know if Rinna was like had to outdo her or what but Rinna says Delilah was 11 okay weird thing to brag about but okay that's how it sounded anyway so then switching gears Lisa Vanderpump says on this trip I just feel like I'm in a really good place with everybody here I know that wasn't the case in New York Dorit butts in and says I will say I hate to draw back but Kyle I really was hurt by you that night of her Bella party when Kyle told Lisa Vanderpump what was said when she and Lisa weren't at that dinner. Yes, that's right. Our second course for the evening is rehashing old news. Unbelievably, they are pulling out all the favorites. It's the greatest hits of the season. Needy Gate. We've got Period Gate. When Erica left to the beach house to go stay in a comfort inn, we are even bringing back Pantygate from last season. At first, Erica, Lisa, Rinna, and Teddy were staying out of it because it was going back and forth between Dorit and Kyle, and Lisa Vanderpump is kind of defending Dorit, which was really pissing off Kyle. Teddy finally felt like she wanted to say something in defense of Kyle because, I mean, it felt like two on one. It really did. All she really said was, you know, we're going around in circles here. The bottom line is, if you don't want somebody to say something, just don't say anything bad about people. You don't have to worry about this then. And then Lisa Vanderpump shut her down. Yeah, her new little toy, teddy bear. She just says, Teddy, stop. This is different. And you know what? In case you're wondering about the hierarchy of this relationship, wonder no more because Teddy stopped. That like kind of shut her up. That was this awkward silence. And then finally, Lisa Rinna coming to Teddy's defense said, oh, come on now. And Lisa goes, well, I mean, she just, she didn't know that she doesn't understand the relationships. And Lisa Rinna's like, but everybody can give their opinion, you know? Like, you didn't have to shut her down. Teddy does say to the confession cam, how is it okay for her to be defending Dorit, but I can't say anything in defense of Kyle? I mean, I just felt like she could have used somebody on her side. Anyway, this conversation, I can't make heads or tails of it anymore. I mean, they are, like I said, we threw Panigate into this. They are jumping all over the place, or at least Dorit is. I think Kyle's trying to keep up with it, but everybody else, including me, is confused. I don't know what Dorit is saying. I think Dorit is just trying to muddy the waters and make herself look good by bringing up old stuff. I don't know what she's doing. Things wind down and Lisa Vanderpump says to Kyle, why don't you just sleep on it? Everyone kind of laughed and Teddy goes, oh yeah, let's, let's talk about this again tomorrow. <laughs> so then Erica says, well, thank you all for coming. Now get the f*** out of my suite and stop fighting. And Dorit says, we're not fighting, Erica. We just cleared the air. Cleared the air? How is making everything a hundred times more confusing clearing the air in your eyes? All right, so the next day, oh my God, the looks these women have is just beyond, I'm in love. I am in love. Dorit, head to toe, I am feeling her look. She's got bangs, she's got these real cool sunglasses on, she's got these jeans that are like metallic and kind of like a motorcycle boot, I mean, she looks cool. Now, in contrast to that, Erica's look, I am not feeling. Erica has like a baggy tracksuit on. I She looks like a cross between Rocky Balboa and a cat burglar. I, I'm not understanding it really. And her hat is cute. It's a Gucci knit hat. Not your best work, Glam Squad. Mikey, what happened?
Okay, so Erica calls Lisa Rinna on the phone and she says, I want all of us to get together today. We need to get out and get some culture and I want all of us to be together. And she goes on to say, I mean, last night just went to hell in a handbag. <laughs> Is that like an updated version of hell in a handbasket? Maybe. <laughs> So that's the plan, only now we see Lisa Vanderpump, who, what has gotten into her? She's got on these fingerless black gloves that are all glammed out with beads and pearls and stuff, and these big chunky boots. Yeah, Lisa Vanderpump. I think she heard me when a few episodes ago I said that her look was too dated. So she calls Kyle on the phone and she asks her if she would like to meet at a park. And Kyle's like, mm, yeah, okay, mm, I don't know. And she's like, what, are you mad? Um, yeah. Okay, well, you, do you wanna meet me? Okay, fine, click. <laughs> so those two go to meet and talk. Meanwhile, the other four ladies get in the van and they're getting started on their day, I guess, without them and they're gonna meet up together later. Again, we have a little cutting back and forth scene, and actually both groups are talking about the same thing, which is the relationship between Kyle and Dorit and Lisa Vanderpump. And you know, it's funny because I feel like all the other ladies were also trying to explain to Dorit Kyle's point of view. Dorit couldn't see that Lisa Vanderpump was even on her side. Oh, I didn't see that. And the others are like, well, yeah, she kind of was. And then Kyle was basically saying the same thing to Lisa Vanderpump. Vanderpump goes, I'm, whenever you're hurting, I'm always on your side. And she's like, well, you weren't last night. So she said, well, okay, I'm sorry. So she apologized again. They end up saying that they love each other, which I'm sure they do. But Kyle is basically gonna kinda keep her nose out of things from now on. You know, I'll let Dorit talk to you when she's ready and I won't fill you in on stuff. And I think that's probably the way she's gonna have to, to handle it from now on. I will say this though, I do think Kyle is a match for Lisa Vanderpump. I think they're at least more equally matched than for example, Vanderpump and Teddy. But Kyle seems to stand up for herself and stand up to Lisa Vanderpump. And honestly, I think Lisa Vanderpump needs somebody like that in her life. I think, you know, you get surrounded by too many yes men all the time and that's not good for you either. So I think they do have a genuine friendship and they do genuinely care for each other. I think it's a good relationship. And for right now anyway, it looks like they're good. Okay, so now all the ladies have met up together. They look freezing. I don't know how cold it is out there, but you know, they've all got their cute clothes on. Kyle's coat is, I don't know, it's like a, it looks like a bronze velvet trench coat. I mean, it's really cool. I told you, all of them look really good today. They are at the Eisenman Holocaust Memorial. Kyle talks about how important it was to Mauricio that she convert to Judaism and what it means to him. And then Dorit to the confession cam tells this heartbreaking story about her grandfather. When he was 16, he got pulled out of his home. His two brothers were killed by the Nazis and his parents were taken to a concentration camp in Siberia. 25 years later, he found out that his parents were still alive. So he went back to Israel to find them. And when he got to their house or his mother's house, she opened the door and because he was like the spitting image of her husband, she knew immediately that that was her son. And just, you know, they fell into each other's arms and they were reunited and it was, oh my gosh, I brought a tear to my eye. Listen, I gotta tell you something else. That's a better Holocaust story than Siggy's. Next, they go and visit the Berlin Wall and so much reflection in one day for these ladies. So that night they all get together and they're going to a beer hall to have Wiener Schnitzel and drink beer and dance and have fun. Lisa Vanderpump mentions that this it's her last night because she has to go back home 
and accept an award for her documentary on the dog abuse in China. And Erica says, oh, you're gonna miss the boat. Apparently they're all going on a boat. Somebody said, I thought there wasn't gonna be a boat. And Erica goes, I lied. <laughs> just like that. I swear to God, my cackle sounded exactly like Erica's. <laughs> Play back the tape. And they just, they all get up and they're all dancing and hooting and hollering and having fun. And that's where this episode ends. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe to Jill Informed if you haven't already. If you have subscribed, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate you. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to leave a comment down below. I love to hear from you guys. If you would like to get notices every time I have a new video out, then go ahead and click on that bell down in the corner. Thank you again, and I will see you next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Central Time for the next recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Bye-bye.